We're talking with Dr. Peter Ramsey with Coastal Orthopedic Associates and of course affiliated with Conway Medical Center. And I know so many people who are suffering every day and it certainly ruins their quality of life, but when does someone know, Peter, that enough is enough with the pain? That's really the million dollar question. I, it's hard to answer uh, just in a quick segment like this. It really truly m is different for everybody, what their threshold is and when the right time is at. Uh, so I recommend that patients come in if they think that they're having enough pain that they'd even consider it. Or, or even if they're not considering it and say, what can I do for my knee, hip, with, for my knee pain or my hip pain? Uh, once they come into my office, I'd, I'd listen to them and, and talk with them a little bit about their problems and how it's affecting their life, uh, what activities they're limited from doing and, and what they would like to be doing. Uh, and that may be different for everybody. Uh, but after that, then uh, it's a quick exam and um, x-rays and that will confirm the diagnosis. Then we talk about the different treatments, whether it be medicine, injections, or surgery. And if it was surgery, we've talked a little bit about that. Uh, we would um, get them all scheduled uh, with regards to the hospital and their preoperative visits. At the Joint Replacement Center here at uh, Conway, what we uh, stress is education with the patients. And the first thing that we would have them do, other than go to their primary doctor to make sure that their heart and lungs and the rest of them are as healthy as possible, would be have them come to an education session. And we make that mandatory for our patients because I think it makes a big, big difference. There are actually a number of studies that back that up as well. Uh, at the preoperative education session, they'll meet with physical therapists, case managers, so they know how to prepare their home uh, and generally get prepared for the process themselves. We encourage them to bring a coach with them, that'd be a family member. And that, I think, ties it together, helps people remember because they'll forget half of what they hear. Uh, we give them nice booklets that, that reinforce everything, and so th I think it empowers the patient and, and decreases the anxiety that they might have. After you've been to the education session, then of course you come in for the surgery. The surgeries generally take about an hour and a half to do on my end of things. That's it? Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time. Now some can take longer and some can actually take shorter than that. Um, it just depends on each individual, in, individual patient. But um, for the most part, when you get into routine, you and I would say my, me and my team uh, get pretty much pretty used to it and it becomes a good routine and that's what you want is, is kind of a boring segment. Uh, that being done, uh, the patient will go up to the uh, recovery floor uh, after the recovery room and they'll uh, most of the time get out of bed the same day with therapists. One of the newest things in joint replacement in the last five or ten years is, is encouraging the patients to move quickly and part of that is getting up, putting in most cases full weight on that extremity and uh, moving as much as possible. We stress early rehab and I think patients do better. I heard that you had a very interesting story to share with us about someone who's actually in the hospital right now just had joint replacement. Not in the hospital now, but left uh, just in the last couple weeks. Um, he was a gentleman who had uh, been using a motorized wheelchair, a motorized scooter for over a year, wheelchair at home uh, just to get around the house. He came in for a knee replacement and actually got in trouble with my nurses uh, uh, on the second night after surgery for walking to the bathroom without a walker. Now, not everybody's that miraculous in terms of their recovery, but it is often quite dramatic and people are often surprised themselves about how much they're able to do right out, right out of surgery. How about the age of hip replacement patients? I know most are seniors, but mm -hmm. I understand there's lots of younger people having this as well. Yeah, the average age in hip and knee replacement is going down quickly, and that may be somewhat with the surgeons being more comfortable with the new materials and techniques, and it may be because the patients themselves are becoming more act active um, and demanding more as, as, say, the baby boomer generation um, wants to continue to be more active and do, and, uh, do uh, more strenuous activities. Um, there is, in my mind, no, ne not necessarily a, a lower age limit, although we like to put it off if you're younger. Um, but I, I've done patients as young as 18 for a hip replacement. That's obviously not the norm and, and uh, wouldn't recommend routinely doing that. Um, but it's very common now to see people in their 50s and I've, I consider them very good uh, candidates as long as everything uh, fits in terms of the clinical picture. We're talking about knees and hips, but are there any other joints that you replace? Uh, Orthopedics do replace a lot of different joints, um, hands, shoulders, uh, things like that. Um, those are not my specialty. I really just specialize in these two, but we do have uh, uh, some of my partners at Coastal Orthopedics uh, that can assess that and, and determine whether a patient will be a candidate for that. Finally, Peter, where is your office located? We're located in the Medical Arts Building adjacent to the Conway Medical Center. Boy, if I have to have anything replaced or at least hip or knees, I'm calling you. Sounds like a good idea. Dr. Peter Ramsey, thank you so much for being with us yeah, today here on 30 Minute Medical.